You know, they're both head over heels in love with each other, as well as the monkeys. I have seen the monkeys over 150 times. I quit counting at 150. I'd say our collection is one of the larger collections in the whole country. Before we talk about it while we're going, and then we talk about it for years afterwards. This is Davy Jones' hair, including the gray. <laughs> I cannot imagine life without the monkeys. That would be a very boring life. <laughs> I have seen the monkeys over 150 times. Um, I quit counting at 150. The passion we have for the monkeys is something we can share. Being a fan of the show has changed my life greatly. It's allowed me to meet a lot of wonderful people and to share my life with those people. Hi, my name's Cindy Bryant and I'm from Muscatine, Iowa. I am the biggest monkeys fan. I have a huge collection of monkey memorabilia and we've created the Purple Flower Gang Monkeys Fan Club, which includes song parodies, stories of the road, and even a monkeys monopoly game. I cannot imagine life without the monkeys. That would be a very boring life. I think, oh my goodness, I don't even like to think about it. <laughs> as far as I can remember, I mean, it was always the music and the, and the songs that really was the main driving force. I really think that their love of the monkeys has really helped broaden and enrich their lives. Hey, hey, I'm Abby. And I'm Joe. And because of the monkeys, we met and we fell in love. And we've been married for nine years. The Monkees aired in 1966 and ran uh, two seasons, 56 episodes. Well, the main characters were the four monkeys actually playing themselves, Mickey Dolenz, Mike Nesmith, Davy Jones, and Peter Tork. It featured the annex of four guys trying to make it in the music business. I think that every single one of them brought something to the table that was funny. I mean, Mike just had that dry wit, but you're just kind of drawn to, what's he going to say next? And Mickey was always bouncing all over the place and acting goofy, and as a little kid, that just made me, you know, laugh. My favorite character on the show was uh, probably Peter and then Davey. Um, they, they're all such unique, different characters. There's something that I like about each one of them. At the end of the episode, the monkeys would always have a, a gig that they're playing or everything would be okay and they'd throw their arms up and cheer and say, yay, you know, the rent's paid or whatnot. But it was always just wrapped up as, in a fun, fun way. As a 12-year-old girl going through crushes, I think we all had crushes on Davey and Peter and Mickey and Mike. I love the sense of humor. They have a, a wonderful, wonderful comic timing. And I love the music. I think it's nostalgia. I think it was the monkeys were a happy time for her and for me and for a lot of people. And I think it brings back those happy memories. It was the first time that there was a TV show that didn't have an adult authority figure. These were kids. And so that, I'm sure, appealed to me as a 12-year-old. It's just fun. It's just good, clean fun. Well, I'm 28 now, and I have been a Monkees fan officially for 20 years. I was first influenced um, by my older brother. He's three years older than me. And uh, he's always been a record collector. And uh, he actually had some headquarters, for instance, was the first record, Monkees record he had. But he had several other Monkees records. So I was definitely influenced to the music first. Well, right now I am uh, 31 years old, and I've been a Monkees fan since uh, I was 10 years old, 1986. Actually goes back even further. I remember 1979, 1980, when I'm three, four years old and watching the Monkees on, uh, on uh, Channel 32 in Chicago, WFLD. The fast effects of the show, you know, how they would do zany things and clown around and, you know, do romps. And I mean, that all must have appealed to me as a kid. By the time I was 16, I was working, so I'd save my money and. You know, whatever didn't go to my girlfriend at the time would go to the, my monkeys collection, so I wasn't really saving anything. <laughs> now, if it weren't for the monkeys, we never would have met. And we've been together. Nine years now. <laughs> I remember when Abby to first told me that she met her husband at a monkeys concert, and then I think it was like five minutes later they decided to get married. And I remember thinking that was a little strange. We actually uh, met at a Denny's before a Monkees concert in Merrillville, Indiana in 1996. When I first met Abby, it was just uh, you know, more just wanting to meet another person that was, you know, around my age and was interested in the Monkees. And 
I saw she had a big folder of Davy stuff, and the friend that I came with to the concert knew who she was and said, oh, yeah, she runs the Davy Fan Club. That's that Abby Guernsey. Uh, so why don't you go, you know, see what she's got, and then we just clicked from there. I just couldn't believe there was somebody young, you know, like me, that liked the monkeys that much. Um, I just thought, wow, there's this guy, he's pretty cute, you know, I thought he looked all right. And uh, it was just it was just exciting, you know, to have somebody come over, sit by me at Denny's and say, oh, so, yeah, what you got there? Because I had some Davy pictures and things like that, so he was really interested to see, you know, what I did. I just wanted to sell her one of the records I brought with me to the concert. That was my only goal. So. <laughs> Which he did, and he got it back. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Meeting Abby and Joe together, really, you know, they're a great team. Abby is, as I said, you know, quiet, and Joe is very stoic. Of course, these were all we got from that person that was in the, what was it, their their hairdresser? They found yeah. them in the trash. In the trash, yeah, exactly. So the person found it and put them up on eBay. They have this great love of something as, uh, I don't know, kind of silly as the monkeys. Is that, I don't know. It's nice or not, but it's just really funny that this is something, their closet passion that they have. You know, the monkeys, apart from initially bringing us together, it was always something that we were always able to talk about. This was a nice foundation, and then it led to a lot of other interests we discovered that, that we shared as well. They're both nice kids, and uh, they really have found something that they enjoy. Everybody should be that lucky. Two f super fans like that, yeah joining together, falling in love, and you know, living happily ever after. If nothing else, if we're old and crotchety and cranky, we can always put on I'm a believer, you know? <laughs>
uh, more confident person because of her fan club and her love of Davey and Mickey and Peter and I think there might be one other one. I think the monkeys uh, certainly are a big impact as far as me as a musician. I started playing guitar when I was 10 years old and uh, the first piece of sheet music I had was from my aunt who had an old I'm Not Your Stepping Stone music sheet. And from there I learned how to finger the guitar chords for that song. And then from there I just started learning how to play all the songs. Mike Nesmith in particular has been the main influence for me musically in my life. Um, certainly I have my foundation with the Monkees, but it was his solo career in country rock with the pedal steel guitar influence that really drove me into pedal steel guitar. We try to stay away from the typical hit songs that the Monkees had, the most recognizable tunes, and cater to a more uh, niche audience with really obscure, you know, Monkees tunes, ones that are still good, but maybe nobody's heard of them. Both he and I probably know every single Monkees song on guitar, note for note. Oh, I love hearing him, you know, interact, especially with Jeff, and he play the Monkee music. It's just, it's so much fun. I think the Monkees are a direct influence of that because I would never have started really playing music with, if not for listening to their music and being inspired to do so. Writing for the newsletter is probably the biggest way that I've expressed my fandom. Cindy started the newsletter in 1987, and um, she is the editor and the publisher. There are days when I come home and work four to six hours on a newsletter. PFG would be the Purple Flower Gang, which is the Monkees fan club that she is, I, I guess she refers to herself as a co-founder of the club. I think that her interest in the Monkees has helped her in a number of ways. She has done so much from like the very first newsletter to what we produce, what she produces today. Peter's going to be on the front cover. Bonnie and I live 30 miles apart. We met at a concert in Chicago, which is 200 miles from home. Two months later, we're on a road trip for two weeks out to LA, you know, to see the Monkees. Bonnie has shared my fandom. She's been there almost from the beginning. She has shared um, all of the, the happiness, the, the silliness that has gone on. She's the other half of me, monkey-wise. She is funny. She has a great sense of humor. She and I collaborate so well together. We've been good friends for a long time. We just recently made a Monopoly game for David, um, the Davy Jones edition, Monkeyopoly. And it, it started, it was one of those things that was just meant to be between me and Bonnie. David will say in the show that he, if you don't sing along with him, you'll be involuntarily um, entered in the Mickey Dolan's Lookalike Contest. So we made that one of the game pieces. It's not just the Davy Jones edition, but it's our edition because it's the places we've been with him. It's, it's kind of our history with him. Mm -hmm. We had so much fun. It, we spent maybe a month working on this, but two weeks really intensive that it was like every night that's all we did. Rock Island, Illinois. In fact, you took your niece Mickey there. We didn't tell her about the show. She was six years old and she was in love with David. We took her to the show, pulled up in front of the place. She saw the marquee with his name on it. Well, Bonnie blew, the, blew it. She said, oh look, it says Davy Jones. We recently gave it to him, so there's gonna be three copies of this game only. I do not think Cindy is obsessed. No, I think she enjoys what she does, and I think it's great that she can do it. I enjoy the shows. I enjoy the music. I enjoy the talents the guys have. I, I think that makes me a good fan. This is what 20 years of collecting has done for us. Oh, I remember when we got married, uh, Abby's father, and it was quick to say this has got to be the largest merger of monkeys memorabilia in the Midwest. <laughs> this one's kind of the monkeys in the Wild West there. Uh, very believable as gunslingers. Their collections just melded together, you know, and now they have a super collection. The costumes were actually released two different ways. They were released as uh, always with the monkey face mask, so the boy or girl could wear, you know, the actual uh, face, per se, of the monkey that was their favorite. One was a mini dress style, so the girls could dress up like Davy with a Davy face and a dress. What I went through to get something, or who I had to know to find that, or, you know, the stories behind.